Epic Wolf. <laughs> it was, man. Man, the sound of pop getting poured every game. I'm so thirsty for Pepsi right now. But first, our Terran player from Incredible Miracle. Does he have the foresight to predict his opponents? I am Yoda. Strategies. So I'm Yoda. And we are actually on Daybreak, our new map here at the GSL. One of our two maps, that in Antigua Shipyard. And here down at the other spawning position, there are only two on this map, is our blue Terran from the team FXO. Can he live up to his name? Is he... FXO the best! Is he the best? What do you think, Wolf? Well, uh, earlier I was joking around saying he was my favorite. I don't actually have a favorite player. The best is one of those people that I really... I actively try... I mean, you guys have listened to my cast of the best. I actively try to make sure that people know that he doesn't just all in. He's a good player. Yep. He does timing attacks a lot, but he can play macro games. Just want to let you guys know. Um, I got to take care of him. I don't want his foreign reputation to be like that of an all-inner. Um, but nice what, so, something uh, that's interesting, I think it was someone's idea on Team League was like Fion. He did a, something about the round of eight in the Super Tournament, and he called the best the villain. And I really uh. like that because he's actually, he is kind of like a villain. He has that little grin. <laughs> he does all-ins all the time. You never know when you match against the best, like, what he's going to do. Is he going to two-port Banshee you? It's true. Is he going to land three Vikings in your main, then bring, like, 12 Hellions and kill you? If he does that, he's probably going to win. And now, this map, man, I don't know. I'm still figuring this map out. All right, I, well, I'll tell you guys about this map a little bit, about the features, because I played on it with, uh, with Torch a little bit. Yeah. It's a relatively large map. You have to take a really long path to get to your opponent's natural unless you destroy the rocks in the middle of the map that open up a larger path. They're just regular rocks, 2,000 hit points. They've got three armor, regular destructible rocks, just like the, the ones on Crevasse, which is no longer in the map pool. Uh, um, the natural is pretty easy to defend. For that reason, it's very far away. You have a secondary ramp that has rocks on it, so you could do something similar to what you have on Crevasse, but there's another entrance, so you like, there's a lot of intricate careful. things. And also, yep. your third base is, is connected, but somewhat far away. It's like a Metalopolis yep. third, it's like the same distance. Now, this will be really interesting because not the, both of these players haven't really had a lot of experience on this map yet. I think it was like last week they announced or something like yeah. that, that this map would be uh, in the map pool. Yeah, I don't know if the players were consulted about this beforehand, I although I do r recall obsing some games of uh, pro players on this map before it was announced. I didn't know what the map was called. Yeah, there was there was a version of this map that uh, I was obsing some games on with some of our Korean commentators, and it actually had a different tile set even. It was like a grass tile set, but the layout was the same. So yeah, they're, they've been kind of playing around with this one for a while here in Korea. But, I don't know how much experience they have. Looks like Blue Flame Hellions again for I'm Yoda. And a uh, fast command center for the best. Yeah, he wants to get that command center up very quickly. It's a very, very wide map. Even for air distances, it's very large. It's, yeah. If you just look at the mini map, it's very deceiving. It's a huge map. It almost reminds me a little bit in terms of it, rem it reminds me a little bit of desert oasis yeah it does the there's long 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 distance. long distances there's two pathways there's rocks that like, kind of make the distance shorter yep that's um, right uh, yoda making his own command center hasn't taken his second gas yet so very similar builds from these guys just a faster command center from the best and of course yoda making that commitment to the blue flame yeah commitment infernal pre-igniter infernal pre-igniter my bad when he said commitment to the blue flame, it sounds like he's part of some like weird cult now in StarCraft. <laughs> the cult of the blue flame. <laughs> the cult of the blue flame. Yeah, the blue flame bring us victory. <laughs> I think all Terran boys are starting to join this cult now. I think so. It's <laughs> I don't know, it sounds sounds pretty good. Just don't drink the Kool-Aid. Don't drink it. It's dangerous stuff. Don't drink that infernal pre-igniter. <laughs> That's right. I don't know, whatever they put in there burns on the way down. <laughs> so, Tech Lab finishing on the factory right now for uh, Yoda, and I wouldn't be surprised at all to see him go for something like we've been seeing the other games. He's making the Vikings right now, I mean. When I said Yoda, I meant the best, I believe. Blue Flame starting for the best. He's getting his own just a little bit later. Yeah. And uh, it's it's a little bit weird to kind of commentate on yeah, this, this style, game because it's it's so it's so new, you know, just the way they're doing things. Well, what's what's also difficult to commentate is both these guys are playing passively, they're building up units, but yeah, no one can really do anything yet. Yeah, it's like you can't really say which is better right now. Um, obviously, the best has a faster expansion, but is that going to matter? I mean, his expansion's not going to be so great if his opponent decides to attack and just kills all his units. Yeah, um, and. I think Yoda might actually have a better composition going into this. 
He's gonna have a Raven out as well. He's got Blue Flame faster. He's got a lot of healings. He's gonna be able to pressure here. Yeah. The best is making a bunker for that reason, but we've seen in the past that even if you have a bunker there, it's very difficult to hold. Hmm. And the best is gonna have his own Blue Flame. He's gonna have four of them. One thing I've noticed about Yoda too is that he likes to get that really, really fast Raven as well. And it's nice Holds up to the be energy. able to... Yeah, yeah, it's, it's that. And then it's also nice to have that option to drop an auto turret in a, in a pinch. You know, if you're in a bind, you can drop an auto turret. Helps out a little bit. Yeah, auto turrets can change the type of battle, especially when they're very low Hellion numbers. Yep. And, he, you know, he did just get that one Raven, and now he's switching the starport with the reactor again so he can produce more Vikings. And a lot of building switching going on for both players here. I wouldn't be surprised at all to see the best decide to get maybe a, a Raven himself, or he could, could get a band chance. I think it's going to be a Raven, you're right. I think it, Yeah, I think Raven is more likely. I'm waiting for it on the production queue. There it is. Yep. There's Three factory Raven. is going to be done here for Yoda pretty soon. That's something that the best hasn't yet added. He's just now adding his second factory. Yeah. That's a good scan by Yoda, too. I mean, it sees if the expansion is there. It sees, you know, a good amount of buildings in the main as well. It's my favorite area to scan. And immediately, Yoda brings his Viking, his medevac, and four Helicans back into his main after he scanned that. He's like, well, I don't know. Is he going for a timing attack? Yeah. <laughs> Went for a drop, maybe. He's got to be very careful about this. Now, last game, we saw Yoda win because the best took a long time to get siege tanks in siege mode. And if we look right now, Yoda's already getting a siege tank. And I wouldn't be surprised if siege mode came shortly afterwards. So, you know, will the best get siege mode a little bit quicker this game? Um, it's, it's really weird. It's, it's almost like it's sort of like a shadow of that Iacoic build that was going around for a while, where it's like yeah. Ravens and Vikings and Blue Flame Hellions and not a lot else. Um, looks like we won't see that this game because both players are getting siege mode out tanks. But last game, it kind of kind of reminded me well, a little funny, bit about that. Basically, the style that we're seeing now is really a shadow of that Iacoic build. And when that build came out, a lot of Terran players said, oh, no, this is just a thing that's not going to catch on. Like, people yeah. are going to figure out how to deal with this. But what's actually has happened is that that build has evolved and it's becoming yeah. the standard. It's kind of been more refined. You know, it's a little bit safer. Um, the Iacoic build in its, in its purest form is, is pretty pretty flimsy so it's it's good to see it kind of combined with this kind of mech style and I don't know I, I really like it I like Hellions uh, meet Hellions whoop. Hellions say goodbye to Hellions and drive past Hellions like I'm not gonna kill your fellow kinsman <laughs> Hellion meets Hellion the new sitcom this fall on <laughs> some network Boy meets Hellion. Everybody, everybody loves Pre-Igniter. That's actually like the show that we're watching right yes, now. Loves <laughs> <laughs> I think that's absolutely right. Everybody loves Pre-Igniter. That's what TBT is now, man. Just change the name to Everybody Loves Pre-Igniter. It's the new yep. sitcom. Some Terrans wouldn't get Ravens early like my Terran friends do, but... Like the Banshee comes in and tries to do some harassment and like flies through a missile turret and the, does like the sitcom lab. It's like, ah. I know. <laughs> yeah. It's like the supply depot goes down, the Hellion rolls in, and it's like the cheer, people cheer for the sitcom person. Yeah. Yeah. A little fake laughter. The Battle Cruiser is like the guest star for this week. <laughs> Tune in this week for a very special Everybody Loves Hellion. It's like when the units dies and they have a sad series episode. Well, that barracks is going to see quite a bit before it goes down. Yeah. The Vikings didn't target it immediately. One, yep. one of them did. The second one joined in after. Yeah. So, who's the annoying neighbor in this sitcom then? Well, I don't know. The thing about the, the this Reaper. sitcom is that there are Zelnaga watchtowers, and the players feel like they're always being watched. Uh, they're trying to take care of it. Like, oh, we gotta clean yeah. this up. All right. The barracks can get caught here again. This is a nice thing you can do with mech, though, is uh, not send your barracks out to die, but send them out to do some scouting and things like that. Yes. Yeah. It's kind of fun. Now I he knows the best is moving out. The best having a lot more units than Yoda. Yeah, I think the best looks a lot, lot yeah. better this game. I mean, and he's got, got a third command center going up. I almost wonder a little bit last game if he forgot siege mode even, because it just didn't make sense that he didn't have it yet. This little timing can be really good because, of course, Yoda has a, a third command center trying to send over there, but yeah. he can't really hold this push very easily. The third is very far away, like I was saying, on this map. Well, this is interesting because there's a lot of... The way this map is laid out now that I'm kind of like looking at it, there's a lot of places where you can park behind a structure and then fire uh -oh, over it. Oh, Thors! Tanks. There's no point defense drone. Catching some of these Vikings. Very huge. If he gets the huge Viking lead, it's, he's already got somewhat of a Viking lead. He's getting even better too. one. Oh, man. I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, if you fly away, you're going to lose everything. I suppose landing is okay. But... 
He's gonna lose all his Vikings, and suddenly the best has a huge but air advantage. Uh oh. Hellion's taking on the siege tanks of the best. He's gonna clean up almost every tank. Wow. Actually, he did get every tank. He did. And is he gonna do a mass drop in the main? It looks like he is. SCV's running away in time, but can he just focus down the command center? I don't know. Deciding to take off again. Oh, look at this. And Raven doing auto turret harassment. Man, you never see this in no, Star No, you don't, Cup. man. This is great. But if you get a certain number of kills with auto turrets in the game, I think you get an achievement. I don't know what it's called. He's going for that achievement right now. We're going to see achievements. The tournament account gets the achievement and, like, pops up on That's my right. screen. <laughs> I like this. I mean, this is not yeah. seen enough. It's really difficult to deal with. Yep. And the Hellions are going to take those out, but, you know, they're still going to do some damage. Very Man, true. TBT is just so different suddenly. It very, it very much is. Now, what's interesting about what Yoda has is he has two Thors. He does have plus one weapons as well. Yep. Something that the best does not have, hasn't even started. Those Thors are going to be able to help against the Viking problem. Now, the Viking problem, let me tell you guys about it, it's 11 Vikings to 2. That's a pretty big Viking problem. I thought you were going to talk about like the Middle Ages when like a village just gets raided by Vikings. <laughs> That's the Viking problem. That is somewhat of a problem. When they show up in their long ships. Oh, looks oh, like. Oh, the Hellion's punching up. Does back away because the Siege Tank sees up. I like that engagement for the best. Yeah. He doesn't overcommit at all. Need to be really, really careful with this composition. You are going to have like less units overall when you go mech. But the nice thing is, is that the, the Hellions do a little bit better job buffering Siege Tank damage than Marines do, really. Well, these Hellions could get a lot of SCV kills. Uh -oh. Well, not if they target down depots and nope. other Hellions. That's, that's for sure. The army of the best in a very awkward spot here. He wants to land those Vikings, he needs to land them. And those Thors for Yoda are going to make a huge difference in this fight. But he lands the Vikings and surrounds the Thors. Well, if the Thors nice were targeting the there. Vikings and the point defense was absorbing all the shots. That changed this battle drastically. Yeah, now Yoda's sitting SCVs against Vikings that are landed. That's not going to work out very well. Thors are good against Vikings in the air, but not good against Vikings on the ground. The best is pushing Yoda back a little bit. Push him all the way back to Dagobah. <laughs> And now the best is rallying and more units. He's going to back off here for a minute, but he's got a pretty good position. Point defense drones look like they are going to expire here. Yep. <laughs> that looks so cool. I know. Oh, ran Rallying out of missed. energy. It's like those little flying things from Star Wars, you know? Yeah. Training with them. And uh, it's the Imperial Probe Droid. Yeah, sort of like that. Um, uh, well, he's getting caught here a little nice bit. Nice pickup there. Yeah, he's trying to pick up his units. He's losing a little bit. And is he going to just go ahead and drop in the main? I looks think like that would be is. smart. Got to be careful of these turrets. So turrets targeting out the Vikings, unfortunately, though. Does get the Raven. That's huge. Yeah, that is. Uh, and the best. I don't know if this yeah, was such just, a good decision. I don't think Walt. so. It's like a little bit awkward. Yeah. He's losing all of his units now. Trying to pick up and get away. Yep. And the best suddenly because... Oh, uh, you know, I was saying, like, he need, when earlier I was like, well, he's just going to back away, get a, a bunch of units, and then try to attack the third. Ugh. And he didn't do that. He's got to let those tanks down. Yeah, he's uh, in a really tough spot now because the counterattack that's coming from Yoda is going to be almost impossible to stop. Yeah, the best is becoming the Kimmy Gibbler of the sitcom. You guys should watch Curb Your Enthusiasm. Uh, Larry David that, plays actually. in it. He's basically the writer of Seinfeld. It's really, really funny. That's what I've been watching in the Gum House a lot these days. And these Hellions taking a lot of hits from the tanks uh -oh. as these Hellions come to clean up SCVs. Whoa! That is a lot of dead SCVs. But meanwhile, SCVs. the best taking a lot of hits, and I think this is more significant because yeah. he has no army. Yeah, that's the thing is that even if he kills, you know, all the SCVs, Yoda just has a stronger army right now by a lot. He's just going to wall straight up the ramp. Yeah, I think the best is pretty dead. Yeah, it's going to be really tough to hold. So we might see. Well, nice positioning here on these tanks. Yeah, it's not bad. He needs to land these Vikings to participate a little bit. He needs their help. Uh-oh. All right. I was wondering if he was going to pull some SCVs to repair the tanks. It's not going to happen. And, you know, the army for Yoda is so small right now. But here comes some reinforcements, so it might just barely yeah, be enough. Yeah, I think it's definitely going to be enough. Just way yeah. too many tanks coming in. Yep. Always standing in the way is like one tank that's got a bunch of SCV friends He's and gonna a bunker. try to mass repair it. You might want to make that, <laughs> that <laughs> command center into a planetary to hold. Maybe. Uh, yeah, it's not looking good. Yep, the force is strong. With well, I thought today. the best was really ahead for that one drop. Like it seemed like a cool idea, but it was way too. He committed way too much, and now he's the game is over. 
You just can't hold from here. You know, auto like turret killing. Auto turret killing a siege tank. <laughs> Dropping the mules, telling them what's up. And Unfortunately for the bats, looks like this is going to be it. Yep, that's what's up. I'm Yoda taking out FXO the best. Round of 32 code A. He's kind of waiting on the GG right now. There's yeah, he's really going to have. A whole lot he's else. probably very upset. He's going to have to try to requalify next season. Yeah, that's going to be a pain. He's somebody that you will see a lot more of in the future, though. That's well, for sure. We'll see him in Team League for sure. I'm GG. Sure. And so that would be, I mean, the best. I believe he was in Code S at one point. So that's another Code S player, former Code S player, knocked out. And I'm Yoda. And he's actually a player who just qualified. He's got to go back through that process again. Yep, that's right. Very, uh, looks very disappointed with his results. And yeah, that like is my rough cord to see. tangled around my foot here in some weird, <laughs> crazy way. It's like in my shoe. It is. It's like one of those man eating plants. It's like trying to pull Wolf underneath the desk. It's like, I'll, like Jumanji. Pull his arm and like hold my little right. creature in the garbage smashers and Star Wars, like grabbing around my <laughs> neck. I'm like, pull it under the water. And you're like, right. do I shoot? What if I hit Luke? <laughs> you have to call John and tell him to turn off all the garbage mashers on the detention level. <laughs> he's like, what? Yep. He's like, curse my metal body. I wasn't fast enough. Yeah, we're, we're like we're screaming happy. with joy. Yeah. That's right. And uh, I feel like screaming with joy because I love casting the GSL. It's so much fun. And this, it's. These days, man, round of 32 Code A is so tense. It's almost as tense as the Code A qualifiers because it's, you've gone to all the work to get through the qualifiers, and then you if you lose in the round of 32, that's just like the biggest letdown ever. Well, there's like all these yeah. different emotions that go through your mind. You know, the emotions of a player who just qualified and loses in the round of 32 yeah. is very actually similar to a player like the best who's been in Code S, Fallen out, fallen out of Code A, requalified, and fallen out again. It's yeah. very difficult for him because... People look at him as uh, now as a player who is struggling and may have like gotten worse, which yeah. isn't actually the case, but he might mentally feel that way. I mean, I was doing well before, now I'm not doing well, but I'm still the same I'm still the same player. I've actually improved a lot, but yeah. everyone else has too. Well it's it's the tough, skill levels you know? go up like this. That's the thing, is that you've got a lot of players coming up that we don't even see in the GSL, so the players that you meet in the round of thirty two aren't necessarily the worst players by any stretch. You know, they're just a player that's in the round of thirty two. So it's just that's what makes it all the more scary. It's the danger because, day, man. Yeah, exactly. I mean, isn't it tomorrow or something we've got Boxer versus Lenok? Jeez. Talk about crazy matches in the round got of 32. Some foreigners playing as well like Phoenix. Yeah. Phoenix is playing a little bit later today. Um, not this next match, but the later session tonight. Yeah, he'll be playing um, against Tassadar, yep. the former Code A finalist. Fnatic Phoenix will be, uh, will be Kind there. of an upset that Tassadar wasn't able to make it out of Code A. Yeah, I was a little bit surprised, but he really didn't play that well in the up and down matches in my opinion too. Yeah. Uh, we're going to take a five minute break. We'll be right back with our final best of three for the early session. Don't go anywhere guys. This is GSL Code A.